Hi everybody, what is going on? It is your boy C4 here, and as promised, I'm bringing you the final complete post-free agency, well, even though the Philadelphia Eagles, as of the 25th, are rumored to be signing Mark Sanchez, which I guess will take butt fumble as a backup quarterback. It could be worse, so we could have Matt Barkley. Um, this should be the end of Philadelphia Eagles' free agency moves. I, with Chris Clements, the safety still out there, I would actually like to see him getting brought in. But ultimately, we're pretty much done, and we can look at the draft. So, that being said, I'm bringing you my 7th round... Uh, seven round Philadelphia Eagles mock draft 3.0. Now we lost uh, we lost our sixth round pick to the uh, New England Patriots in the Isaac Sopawaga trade, and we lost our fifth one of our two fifth round picks uh, in the Darren Sproles trade. So now we have a first, second, fourth, fifth, and seventh. Uh, now looking at this, I have only one stretch really. It's the second round pick, and I'm going to explain it in a sec because it could be one of two players. But I'll say who it could be because I do think whatever it will happen, I'll get there. Anyway, first overall, pretty much stays the same. I don't have my first, my, my mock draft 2.0 or the first one in front of me, so bear with me. But the first overall pick is staying pretty consistent, and that will be Calvin Pryor, the free safety from Louisville. Uh, six foot two, 210 pounds, ran a 4'5", 840, 18 on the bench press, the most at the combine. Uh, like I said in the last video, I referred to this guy. He's the, the closest thing to a Brian Dawkins that we could have. Uh, the saddest day of my professional football fan life was when the Philadelphia Eagles didn't come to agreements with Brian Dawkins and basically let him walk. Uh, I was really actually considering not being an Eagles fan strictly because, like, how could you do a guy like Brian Dawkins like that? How could you not just give him a respectable deal It's only, like, two years and really understand that what he brings to the locker room is more valuable? Yada, yada, yada. We're talking about Calvin Pryor. Calvin Pryor's a beast. I think that... Uh, he has a higher ceiling than Hashan Clinton Dix. I think Clinton Dix is a little bit more well-rounded at this point in his career, but I believe the ceiling for Calvin Pryor is a lot higher uh, than uh, Hashan Clinton Dix. Honestly, I wouldn't be upset with either one of them. We just need to get a safety in the first round. Um, and in the second round, okay, here's here's the tricky pick. In the second round, I have the Philadelphia Eagles taking Kyle Fuller, the cornerback from Virginia Tech. Now, I think either Kyle, Kyle Fuller or Jason Verrett will slip out of the first round uh, for corners. I think that... Uh, Justin Gilbert will be gone for sure. He's head and shoulders in number one. Uh, I think uh, Darquise Denard will probably go mid-round. I think I right now I have him to the Pittsburgh Steelers. But um, I could see uh, Brady Roby probably right now is the most well-ready, pro-ready out of uh, Roby, Fuller, and uh, Jason Verrett being the you know the top five corners, top five supposed corners in this year's draft. So I think that Roby... And either Verrett or uh, Fuller will get drafted, but that means one of them is going to slip. I think Roby for sure will get drafted. I have him going to the Bengals at 24. And I think the 49ers will t pull the trigger on Jason Verrett and add more depth to their corners. Thus meaning Kyle Fuller will be in the second and the Philadelphia Eagles will trade up. Um, I think that they have, you know, that ace in the pocket in Brandon Graham. Uh, Brandon Graham is very valuable, still has lots of youth. It was a four first round pick, but not, hasn't really transitioned well to a 3 4 defense. Uh, would be an ideal 4 3 defensive end. So I think that could be trade bait where Philly will trade their second and Brandon Graham to move up to grab either Kyle Fuller or uh, Jason Verrett. One of these corners will slip. I can almost guarantee it. And look at that. That is a dream draft right there. So obviously, I'm going to put up kind of like an asterisk saying that I assume that, you know, obviously when I'm assuming a trade will happen, this pick's not really that unlikely uh, in case all the chips fall. But we're just going with that because I want to make it entertaining for y'all. So in the third round, I have Philadelphia taking outside linebacker. Uh, Trent Murphy from Stanford. A lot of guys have him going between the two, uh, the second and the third round. Uh, I was actually a big fan of him at at the um, Senior Bowl. He did, I saw a lot of Senior Bowl workouts. He looked like an absolute beast. But his combine stats fell a little short. He only had 19 on the bench press. Uh, for a guy at 6'5", 250, you might want to see a little bit more, you know, raw power. Um, so I think he he will be available at the third round. And he will be able to be a kind of a project future move in when Trent Cole is done. Pass rusher. Uh, for this team, but right now, if he gets drafted as is, he'll be able to definitely, you know, be a, more of a rotational uh, pass rusher, uh, be used on certain blitz packages, so I'm all well for that. Uh, in the fourth round, we're sticking with defense. Uh, Keith McGill, uh, the cornerback from Utah, I, had the, I believe he was my fourth round pick in Mock Draft 2.0. This dude's six foot three, two 211 pounds, ran a four five forty. you know, moving towards the Legion of Boom. Uh, Philly got Nolan Carroll, I think he's like six feet tall. Um... Kerry, well, I don't know if Kerry Williams is over six. Kerry Williams, Buddy Fletcher, are over six feet tall, but you gotta go. You gotta start going to the way, the way of the Legion of Boom with Richard Sherman and Cam Chancellor, all these big secondary players. Keith McGill is a great project player in the fourth round. I think uh, some people have him going the third, 
And if he does fall there, I don't want Philly to get him because he is still a project player. Uh, very, very fast, but his hips were really, really slow. He has trouble, you know, catching with speedy receivers and adjusting to different routes. So I think adding him to the depth and the mix of the cornerbacks, and he can also probably play a little bit of safety, 6'3", 211, that's safety build. So obviously you can have something to work with, a player there to mold uh, for Chip Kelly and uh, Billy Davis. Fifth round, stick in defense. I've had this guy in every one of my mock drafts. That is Craig Lawson, the strong safety out of LSU. Um, Philly only has, I think they only have three safeties right now. Two, three safeties. Is it two? Two, three. I think they only have two fucking safeties. I might be missing someone, but they got Nate Allen, Malcolm Jenkins, and uh, I might be missing one more, but I think only two safeties. Philly, you got to get at least four. So let's see, you get Calvin Pryor, you get Keith McGill, who could probably play a hybrid between corner and safety. You got to get Craig Lawson. The strong safety LSU, 6'1", 220 pounds, uh, 4'6", 40. I think Craig Lawson's a beast, man. This guy's a big-time hitter. Uh, you know, I, I kind of got to think back to the Saints game. Remember they had that guy in the playoffs? Um, can't remember his fucking name. He's not really that big of a, big of a name. He's a French name, some French-sounding name. But he's a fucking hitter, man. He doesn't play every single snap when he gets in there. It's his job to set the tone for the defense. That's what Craig Lawson will be able to do. Plus, you know, fifth-round pick... That's the kind of project player that you'd want. A fifth round pick's the kind of guy that you can. That's not going to be put in the lineup right right away to start 16 games. You can build ease him into the lineup. I think I'd rather Craig Lawson uh, over Nate Allen for sure. You only got Nate Allen at one year deal, so an improvement there would be welcomed. And then in the seventh round, I think the Philadelphia Eagles should kind of move on from Alex Henry, at least bring in competition for him to step up because statistically Henry's not that bad. But he just doesn't make the big time kicks that really really matter. So I think you bring in Chris Boswell, the kicker from Rice. Uh, in my opinion, probably the best kicker in this draft. Obviously, seventh round pick. Um, I think he made like 93% of his college kicks, something like that. So he's super, super accurate. I think at the very least, spend the seventh round pick on a pretty solid kicker with a lot of upside. They can at least, at the very, very least, bring competition for Alex Henry to step his game up. But there you have it. First round, Calvin Pryor. Second round, Kyle Fuller. Third round, Trent Murphy. Fourth round, Keith McGill. Fifth round, Craig Lawson, and the seventh round, Chris Boswell. All defense this draft. Offense could our offensive line could use a little bit of depth, uh, depending on how the Deshaun Jackson thing goes. May need to look at a wide receiver, but as it sits in stone right now, all defense this draft, and this will be a team that would you know divisional playoffs automatically. There you have it, guys. It's your boy C4 giving you the final Eagles uh, mock draft 3.0. As always, make sure you subscribe to Beast Mode TV for all your Philadelphia Eagles. I'll be releasing a 32-team uh, mock draft breakdown videos as I did last year, which were pretty successful. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that. Until next time, it is your boy C4 saying peace out.